Welcome to the Christmas edition, episode 14 of Musings of a Gen X Home Baker. And today we're gonna to go ahead and make my mother's sticky buns. And really the reason for making the sticky buns was what happened on Thanksgiving. I had texted a variety of different people, a lot of the folks you have seen on the show, friends and family, and I had te texted Marcy and said, hey, I'm gonna make, I'm making Carol's Mom's Rules today, one of the episodes that we, you saw here on Musings of a Gen X Home Baker. And she said, well, that's really cool. I'm making your mom's sticky buns today. So I thought, oh, huh, that's kind of funny. You're making my mom's sticky buns and I'm making Carol's Mom's Buns Rules, whatever. And then I texted Melanie and she says, oh, I was planning on making your mom's sticky buns for Christmas. So it was kind of a funny thing that everyone else was making my mother's <laughs> sticky buns and I was making Carol's mom's rolls, which was really cool anyway. And they were fabulous and it was a great Thanksgiving meal, but it reminded me that perhaps this could be the best of the year. And we're gonna really tie all of my friends and family in together from Christmas and New Year and really, these are a few of my favorite things, that kind of idea from the song from The Sound of Music. And I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and wear a shirt that says, Go Be Kind. This doesn't have a particular musical soundtrack, but it has a soundtrack at the end of the day anyway. And it's really from Leon Ligathetis, and I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, who wrote The Kindness Diaries. And before you saw him on his Netflix show with the same name, I went to see him in Grand Rapids at a Schuler bookstore in early 2015, I think it was, probably in January of 2015, and heard him speak and really became connected to what he was talking about. You know, he rides either is in a car or on a motorbike and travels around without money and really shows how kind people are by him asking for either gas money for his vehicle or for strangers for a place to stay at night or for a meal. And he travels around the world doing this and really meets a lot of extraordinary, ordinary people. It's very inspiring, especially after I guess this year of 2020 and going into 2021, I thought it was a good time when I'm thinking about my mom who everybody's making her sticky buns which we're gonna make tonight today tonight and also then I thought oh the go be kind t-shirt is great as I tell you about the magical connections that my friends and family have made throughout the year that really have culminated in a few of my favorite things for Christmas and my birthday so we're gonna go ahead and do that tonight and we're gonna go ahead and do my mom's sticky buns so tie-in number one, and I hope I don't miss anybody, it's very possible, but tie-in number one is to Ed and his mom. So we've met them on one of the episodes when we did the rhubarb cake, and you know that we're very close to Ed and his mom and dad, and we feel like they're our second parents and so forth. So for Christmas and birthday this year, Ed tying everything and all together, all of our interests, You'll notice I'm sporting a new apron, and it's from St. Viateur Bagels in Montreal. Viateur, Viateur, I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly either. So it's going to be, I guess, a night of in mispronunciations perhaps, but this is a bagel place that we order bagels from through Gold Belly that was featured on Somebody Feed Phil, the show I've talked about, the show where Phil Rosenthal goes around and to different cities and is really excited about different food culture and so forth. Well, we, because of this Montreal episode, and we love Montreal, it's one of our favorite cities, we've ordered bagels now from there all the time and we've given them out to family and friends. We always have some in the freezer ready to go. So Ed, for Christmas and birthday this year, gave me an apron from there. And then as an ornament, he gave this wonderful little ornament that has sort of a design from Robert Indiana, the love kind of design, little ornament for our tree. And we love different Christmas ornaments for a tree because when we went and visited them in Marco Island, which I believe I've mentioned, we went to Naples and the art museum in Naples had a, like a trifecta of different exhibits. And one of them, was a Robert Indiana exhibit. 
So this was how Ed comes into play for Christmas this year, tying all of our interests in together. This is how Ed celebrated that this year for Christmas. So that's how we're tying Ed into this. These are a few of my favorite things show. And, but I wanted to tell you kind of a cool thing. When I texted Marcy at Thanksgiving, and we are actually gonna bake these, these rolls because they have to, sticky buns or cinnamon rolls because they have to, they have to set or rise overnight. Typically, the recipe calls for the frozen bread dough or balls. But because this is Musings of a Gen X Home Baker, we're gonna go ahead and do homemade dough or rolls and then add the ingredients from my mother's sticky buns. And Marcy actually, when she was doing them on Thanksgiving, sent me the recipe that she used to make the rolls and that's what I'm going to do with the dough tonight so that it can rise and add the ingredients then, the toppings, from my mother's sticky buns rather than using the frozen dough. Now, interestingly enough, this is my mother's sticky bun recipe and that's what my friends remember. But it is also, well, okay, two cool things. It's in my mother's handwriting, the recipe card, which is, I love seeing my mother's handwriting on things, especially since, as you know, she passed away. Let's see, she passed away Ooh, 18 years ago now, but it seems sometimes like yesterday. But this is via a neighbor that we had when we were growing up in the country named Eleanor Lake. And she was one of our next door neighbors and she gave my mom the sticky buns recipe. But when I told you about when I would have those college sleepovers and overnighters when my girlfriends would come and stay at my mom and dad's house, my mom would often make the sticky bun, re sticky bun recipe and that's what they remember. So. Marcy actually has a copy of this same recipe with, in my mother's handwriting. So it's pretty cool. So we're gonna combine two different recipes today and with um, all the love that's passed on in memory for all these years. So it really is kind of a cool way to tie everybody in together. So I'm gonna read you the recipe for the actual dough and then I'll give you the ingredients for how we do the filling part. Now this is something that you do grease a bunt pan, that's how, it, it's sort of like the monkey bread, sticky bun type of idea. So I've gone ahead and greased a bunt pan. So for the dough, what we're gonna do is, it is one cup of milk warm, about 110 degrees Fahrenheit, third cup water warm, about 110 degrees, one quarter cup granulated sugar, two tablespoons unsalted butter melted, two and a quarter teaspoons instant yeast, three and a cup, three and a quarter, pardon me, three and a quarter cup all-purpose flour plus extra for the work surface, which we're gonna put on, and two teaspoons salt. So that is gonna be the basis for actual, the bun part of the dough, because that's what we will let rise overnight. Now the interesting thing in with this monkey bread sticky bun recipe is that you put the topping on while it's rising overnight. So the whole thing, rises overnight and then literally you just put the whole the bunt pan in the oven in the morning and you're ready to go. So I've already greased the bunt pan like I told you. Now if you were doing this with the recipe that my mother gave me, you'd be putting in 18 frozen dough balls in the pan. So that's what you would do if you weren't doing homemade, homemade bread. So then now the other thing I'm gonna tell you is I double the recipe for the filling or the topping items. You already know this, I like robust flavors, and I often think that with just one serving, that the flavors aren't as robust and it doesn't cover as much of the dough. And a lot of times I will end up putting more than the 18 dough balls in the bun pan. So I'm gonna give you the regular recipe, but also know that I'm going to double it. So you can choose how you wanna go about this. So in a small pan, I would mix one small box of vanilla pudding not instant, although I goofed and got the instant, so we'll see how this goes. Two thirds cup brown sugar, two teaspoons cinnamon, and one cup chopped nuts. You sprinkle this over the balls and then you drizzle three quarter to one stick of melted oleo over the buns. You cover with a warm wet towel overnight. You leave sitting them on the counter and then you bake in the morning for about a half hour at 350 degrees and then you unvert on a plate. But my mom, which I love, has a big thing that says note in capital letters with an exclamation mark, very runny when taking out of pan, so be prepared. So I love the fact that my mother prepared me 
on the recipe card for what to expect. So again, those we'll go ahead and go through the recipe together, but the what I've given you for the ingredients and measurements are one serving, and I actually double the recipe. So I just wanted to let you know about that. So we're gonna go ahead and make these lovely sticky buns courtesy of my mother, courtesy of Eleanor Lake, who was a dear neighbor when we were growing up in the country. So looking forward to that, to um, these sticky buns. So we're gonna go ahead and just go right down the ingredient list for the actual dough, the ball part of the sticky buns. So we're gonna go ahead for the dough and add one cup warm milk, about 110 degrees. I warmed this in the microwave and then I did use my thermometer to, to make sure that it was about 110 degrees. Then we're gonna go ahead and add about a third cup warm water. Again, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, I warmed this up in the microwave and used my thermometer to check the temperature. Then we're gonna go ahead, and as I say, I'm just gonna go, I'm going right down the line, one quarter cup granulated sugar. So we're gonna go ahead and add the sugar, one quarter cup granulated sugar. And then we have two tablespoons of unsalted butter melted. I did go ahead and melt the butter in the microwave. So that's two tablespoons unsalted butter. And then we're going to go ahead and add two and a quarter teaspoons of instant dry yeast. So again, two and a quarter teaspoons. So two and a quarter. So one teaspoon, two teaspoons. So that'll start foaming, which is great. That's what we want. So two and a quarter teaspoons. Okay, so that yeast, oh, oh, that smells so good. I can already smell it starting to foment in the liquid mixture. So we've added the two and a quarter tablespoons of instant yeast, and now we're gonna go ahead and add three and a quarter cup all-purpose flour. So this is where our beautiful King Arthur flour comes into play, and we are gonna add three and a quarter cup. Now, while I'm doing this, I have to kind of tell you that as with most people, the holidays are a great time to showcase all of your favorite food items from both sides of the family. So for Thanksgiving and or Christmas, we had, as I said, I made Carol's mom's rolls or buns, which was, they were so fantastic. So again, I'm adding three and a quarter cup. That's one cup. And I'm going to add the second cup. And we made my mother-in-law's lovely green salad that we make every year three and a quarter so now we're adding the quarter cup right now so here's the quarter cup and then two teaspoons of salt so we're going to go ahead and add that and this is our last part of the recipe that we will be adding for the dough so again two teaspoons of salt so one and two so we're gonna go ahead and use our dough whisk, which you, it's been a while since you've seen the dough whisk out. And we're gonna go ahead and, I'll be using my hands here in a few minutes, but let's at least get the dough started. We also, we did go ahead and get a turkey breast this year. Usually we get um, a full turkey from the co-op, but this year, because it was just the two of us, we did go ahead and get a, a turkey breast from Otto's Turkey. And our good friend, Tom, gave me the recipe this year for the brine, which was just beautiful. It was a buttermilk brine, and the turkey breast turned out great with all those, those other lovely food items. So that was a really fun way to uh, do something a little different and something I hadn't tried before. We usually do a pretty simple turkey, and this year we decided to use the brine because it was the turkey breast, and it was moist and delicious and just, just really quite lovely. So, okay, I've got to get my hands with a little bit of flour in it here. So I can get right in there with the dough. I think it's beyond, beyond the dough whisk now. I think we need to get in there with our hands a little bit and work the dough to form it a little bit better. Because the ultimate goal is to really make balls from it that we will use for our sticky buns. So that's kind of the, the goal is to make it so it hangs together, sticks together, so we can make beautiful dough balls. Again, as I said, usually we do 
with the frozen dough balls, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I thought for this occasion, we would go ahead and use the recipe that Marcy used to actually make the balls. So that's kind of a fun, you know, something because again, we're learning and modifying recipes of memory and making them a little more, uh, everybody's using them to shape, shape how they feel they remember and want to. I just thought it was so cool that she was making these and it was just instantly took me back to just some great, just great times together when we would, when my mom would wake up and she'd already been up and making, uh, we could smell the sticky buns in the oven for, uh, for breakfast. So, you know, that's a great, certainly a great memory to have. And I'm so glad that I have friends who have that memory as well. So that's a really, I don't know, just in that in and of itself, I cannot tell you the shiver of pleasure that it gave me when I got that response back from Marcy and Melanie after I had texted them. I don't know if it got much better than that, but that was one of the greatest gifts this year of 2020, was just knowing that that sort of legacy had been passed on to people who really cherished that as a great memory as well. So it was just nice to hear that. And as I say, it was just one of the best texts I ever got was hearing them say that they were using my mom's or making my mom's sticky buns. So it was very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and let those sit for a few minutes and form them into balls, but I'm gonna go ahead and also make the topping as well so that we're ready to go. Once the balls are in the bundt pan, the greased bundt pan, we can go ahead, I'll go ahead and add the dry mixture. For the dry ingredient mixture, I've actually gone ahead and chopped up, although the recipe calls for one cup chopped nuts, I have gone ahead, because I told you I like to double the recipe for the toppings, I've gone ahead and done two cups of chopped nuts. So to this, we're going to add our vanilla pudding. Again, it's supposed to be not instant. They're small packages, but here we are. I looked at my boxes that I, or my boxes, yeah, that I use that I purchased a couple weeks ago, and they, they're instant. So I'm hoping these actually turn out okay. I've never used instant before, so I'm not really sure what the difference is going to be. But we'll find out tomorrow morning together to see how this turns out. So I'm going to use two of the vanilla puddings. Again, you're not supposed to use instant. My mother has that in parentheses in the recipe, but I apparently got too excited when I was writing my grocery list out and didn't read the obvious. I guess it would have been better had it been the big note instead of in parentheses. But anyway, so we've gone ahead, even though the recipe calls for one small box of vanilla pudding, I've used two, and then it calls for two thirds cup brown sugar with our dry mixture, and I'm gonna go ahead and add two of the two thirds cups. So again, I like to have, I really like coverage of all of the, the buns part, and I find that if you just use, again, the single measurements, it doesn't have the same coverage, and so, and I think we have a lot of dough too, now that we've done the, the actual, rather than using the frozen dough balls, so this is a good time to make sure we have enough, as I say, enough coverage. So that's pretty much it to the dry ingredients. And so with these, the nuts, the vanilla pudding, and the brown sugar, yep, that's right. Oh, and I have to add two teaspoons of cinnamon, but in our case, we're gonna go ahead and add four teaspoons of cinnamon because again, I'm doubling the recipe. So I'm glad I looked at my recipe again. So I'm gonna go ahead and add four teaspoons, one, two, three, four. So that's four teaspoons of cinnamon. Okay, so we'll mix that in together. So I guess they're really just the, the four ingredients then. Cinnamon, the vanilla pudding, the nuts, and the brown sugar. So that's basically it for the dry mixture. And I've been melting, you probably heard the microwave go off, I've been melting the oleo because it calls for, once I put this over the balls, once we make them, we'll go ahead and put the dry ingredients over, drizzle with the oleo, and it says three quarter to one stick, so I'm doubling that. So we put all of that over the, the balls in the bunt pan and let it rise overnight, and it should probably double in size. And in the morning, like I said, we just go ahead and put it in the oven. 
So I'm going to take my dough that we've just made. Again, you watch me make the dough and then the dry ingredients. And I'm just going to make them into basically like balls, little make maybe smaller around the size of a golf ball, although I think mine are ending up a little bit larger. And we're just gonna put them in, you know, like a regular monkey bread type of thing. You've heard that before, that term before, it's like pull apart bread. And we're just gonna go ahead and put them in our bun pan and just use up all the dough and line them up in the bottom of the pan or to make nice sort of rows of these different ball shapes. And then we are going to add all of our dry ingredients to that and then drizzle with the oleo for overnight rise. So I will go ahead, I mean, you get the general idea. It's a greasy bunt pan. You're making these little roll or dough balls and then we're gonna put our ingredients over that. So I think you get that general idea and we'll go ahead and I will do that <laughs> off camera and I will be back in a few minutes. So I have my dough balls in the bottom of my bunt pan and I'm just gonna take, I'm just use my hands and sprinkle on the mixture. Now, I did say that I do usually double the recipe of the dry ingredients, and that is when I do the frozen bread dough. Now, since I'm doing it by hand, I don't actually have as much, as many balls as I typically would through a frozen bag mixture. So you know what, I may not, I think I'm gonna hold back or reserve some of this, the, the dry ingredients that I'm making and not put as much on. So. I'm gonna put, go ahead and put that in a sealed container and make another batch later. It's all dry ingredients. It'll last, you know, I'll just, I'll just make it up in the next day or so because I also don't wanna add more than I need to the dry mixture. So we'll go ahead and put that in, as I say, a sealed container and we'll make another batch. But for right now, I've got my dough balls fairly well covered with the dry ingredients. And I'm gonna go ahead and drizzle on some of the oleo and then cover it with a warm, wet towel overnight and they'll rise and then we'll go ahead and stick them in the oven tomorrow. Again, when we stick them in the oven, it'll be for a half hour or so, you watch it, at 350 degrees. So since this is Christmas and kind of the birthday, gratitude, thankful for the new year episode, these are a few of more of my favorite things that have tied in friends and family from this year with their specific Christmas gifts. And we don't do a lot of gifts with people, but we are so blessed to have just really thoughtful friendships that they think about specific things that we're particularly interested in or that are very meaningful to either our relationship together or that are meaningful to us. And here are a couple of things. So you might remember in the pistachio scone cherry episode for the scones from DC and my friend Karen, well, she always gets very thoughtful gifts, and she has um, had many thoughtful gifts for my birthday and Christmas this year, but of particular note was the fact that she did everything online this year for shopping and handpicked these postcards, because I love different art, arts and artisan postcards, and she handpicked each artisan postcard this year from this company called DC Is My City, and these are all really cool 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 and she handpicked all of these washington dc postcards and sites of places that we have visited together when we have been when i have been with her in dc so it was really cool to open these up and find all of these great little treasures of places that we have visited together in these very cool, very art-oriented postcards. This one specifically is from the Museum of African American History, and both Chris and I actually went there when we visited Karen one year, so that's pretty cool. There's one from the MLK Library. Oh my gosh, what's this one? This is the Museum, which is very cool. This is the National Cathedral. You know I've talked about that quite a bit. So you know how much I love that and the, the behind the scenes tour. We've gone to the courtyard at the art museum. Oh my gosh, they're just so cool. National Building Museum, very cool. I always get a lot of cool gifts from that gift shop. 
and we visited there many times. Of course, the World War II Memorial, the gallery place at the Chinatown Metro Station, and then, oh yeah, this is the MLK Memorial Library. So she always keeps me up to date on the doings of the different libraries and so forth in the library system because of my interest. So that was a cool find from Karen in my at my doorstep. My stepmother and father usually, well, not usually, but for several years in a row have given us the Harry and David pears. And I make two really great pear recipes baking baked items from the pears and it's because I have been a lifelong fan I know it is not made anymore I'm finally over it after all these years but I make I have so many recipes that I have torn out of the gourmet magazine even as a young a tween teen and into college and my adulthood when the gourmet magazine was still being produced I make a ton of recipes that I have been making over the years from the Gourmet Magazine. And this one is roasted spiced pears and figs with almonds from the December 1998 edition. Yes, I know, that's how long I been a, was a subscriber, I know. And then, oh, this, this is a beautiful one I actually just made today, the upside down pear gingerbread cake, which is so good and makes the house smell so good, is from the February 2002 gourmet magazine so I have made I actually in my repertoire in my bins and baskets and so forth of recipes I have a lot of recipes from gourmet that I make all the time that are staples for us and it's not just baked items but there are a lot of regular recipes as well like you know smashed potatoes with capers and shallots and um, uh, coarse mustard and oh I make this amazing chicken recipe on the grill where you soak the chicken in different herbs and spices and, and buttermilk overnight and it's just a fabulous chicken recipe. So I make a lot of things from the Gourmet Magazine and the pears allowed me to make those two great recipes from the Gourmet Magazine. Again, I think I'm finally over the fact that they, it isn't being produced anymore. It's been several years now, but I think I'm finally over it. So my husband for my birthday, because you know what a huge reader I am, and I love independent books, booksellers and libraries. I don't want to, you know, exclude the library. But for my birthday this year, Chris got me a gift certificate to This is a Bookstore and Book Bug, which is a fabulous independent bookseller here in Kalamazoo. So thank you, Chris, for that. I can't wait to go and browse and get my haul of books for uh in the, in the future. So we're going to be doing that, which will be really fun for Chris for his Christmas, because I'm a huge fan. And I don't think I've maybe mentioned this on, well, maybe I did. When, oh, I think we did. I mentioned it in one of the episodes about being in Oxford on Christmas and my birthday. I might've done it in my blog. I'm not actually sure anymore, but we were in Oxford about five years ago for Christmas Eve and Christmas and went to the midnight mass at Christ Church at Oxford University and for Christmas this year and we're huge fans of the choral music there for Christmas and actually I got this for my stepmother as well it's Gloria it's a two CD set of the choirs of Oxford and what's really cool is it's not just Christ Church but it's the choir of Magdalen College and the choir of New College so it's a beautiful beautiful double CD set. So that's actually something that went outward bound, but it's something that's very special to both Chris and I. Then you'll have to, from my mother-in-law, who we spend you know, a lot of great Christmases with, and I actually did my, put it in my blog post of the same name, but this year for Christmas, she got me Whistle Pig maple syrup. Now, Whistle Pig is made in Vermont. It actually is a whiskey, but they also make maple syrup. Now, the maple syrup does not have whiskey in it, but they make the maple syrup in their retired whiskey casks, I guess you would say. Now, we also do like the whiskey, and I think I might have mentioned this, that you know some maybe mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws go shopping, but we go whiskey tasting, and that's how we first came about the whiskey, the Whistle Peak whiskey. We were actually tasting for a colleague of mine, and we're FaceTiming him to taste the different whiskeys, but also at the end of the, the tasting, 
they had us taste the maple syrup and it is phenomenal. It's so good and I was out of it. So my mother-in-law kindly and beautifully sent me Whistle Pig maple syrup to put in my stash. So that was really a lovely gift. From the Iceland friends, not to be outdone, we had a memory of planting trees together in Iceland because on the Beekman trips, there's always a um, charitable component or a give back component. And so we planted trees and the this year, Annie, the friend from Iceland who lives, sent me this lovely, beautiful, copper tree, birch tree, as a memory of our time planting trees together. So that was a beautiful, beautiful surprise to open up on Christmas morning was this beautiful um, copper tree. So that was a great memory of our time together in planting trees in Iceland. So that's a fun, these are a few of my favorite things. You can see where all the friends and family tie every all the interests in together. And then my girlfriend, Melanie, who gave me, was always a great gift giver and so thoughtful. And her daughter is as well. So she's definitely carried on that tradition. And now mind you, her daughter gave me these beautiful handcrafted earrings and necklace that were made by an artist from Belgium, from the Philly Art Museum. And then Melanie gave me some really cool little personal things too, but that's not what I'm going to show you. The coolest thing is so specific and can only be probably given to a handful of people. And from Elizabeth, it's Captain Capture, and it's a comic book that I think she got at the Smithsonian. And it's about digitizing media or digitizing like slides or photos or something like that. It's about basically digitizing a collection of something. And the opening line thought bubble is, we need to get this collection of 50,000 objects digitized. I'd love to get through it much faster with all the visitors we're getting online, but it seems like there are challenges everywhere. I read that first thought bubble and just cracked up because of an experience that Chris and I have had and those same thoughts that we've had this conversation about, about digitizing a collection. So Chris has been working on this project about this conservationist and naturalist from the New Hampshire area where he's from. And that was a big conversation that he and volunteers had with the Historical Society. But how the heck were they going to digitize this huge collection of glass slides? And so I opened this up and I thought, oh my gosh, Captain Catcher, Capture could only be given to a very specific set of people. And it was Awesome. So it was great. Loved it. So Captain Catcher, Capture, a great comic about digitizing a collection of objects. So very cool, very specific, very thoughtful. Then for my girlfriend, Carol, who we've talked about a lot, Carol Nail, for um, my birthday, because we decided we were not giving each other Christmas gifts this year, for my birthday, she combined two experiences into a great birthday. So from Oprah Winfrey Foods are these different rel relishes and chow chow. And I don't know if you remember, we, she, Carol and I went to see Oprah on her tour last year in January, right before really the lockdown. We went to, we flew to Minneapolis, St. Paul to see Oprah on her tour. And so as a memory of that experience, Carol got me these, th actually there are three different relish relishes in Chow Chow. And interestingly enough, Vivian Howard, who I've talked about quite a bit, also makes homemade Chow Chow. So in this, also in this box, there are three different relishes or Chow Chow, and there are also recipes that go with it. So we haven't tried it yet with something, but we're going to. And then the piece de resistance from Carol is... So then Carol combined another trip to New York City that we took a few years ago and tied it all in with this beautiful chocolate that I think was on Oprah's recommendation as well. And it's called Harlem Chocolate Factories, established in 2014. And the cool thing about it is when Carol and I were in New York City on a trip a few years ago, we spent some time in Harlem, not only going to a church service on Sunday morning, but going to Marcus Samuelson's restaurant. And we went to brunch there. It was a music brunch actually in Harlem and had just an amazing experience. We ended up having front row a table and there was a choir there and 
gosh, we ended up crying because of this young one, woman saying Princess Purple Rain. And again, it was just, we had this great experience. So she tied all of that in together with this Harlem chocolate. And the cool part about this is it has, it's called the Golden Brownstone Collection. And there is, we have actually milk chocolate and we have dark chocolate and then we have white chocolate. Oops, turn it around. And that satisfies both Chris and I because I'm a milk chocolate girl and Chris is a dark chocolate guy. So, and we'll split the difference between the white chocolate. So, great tie-ins. I mean, how can these not be a few of my favorite things from friends and family? And they're the new friends. They're the new friends, the Iceland friends, the old friends who just are so good and thoughtful about very specific love gifts that tie us into different experiences and memory. And really, that's kind of what we were talking about with the whole baking series. So this is how we tie it all in together and it's really over my mom's sticky buns. So great memories today. I'm gonna to tell you also about a couple of things that were very thoughtful of folks I haven't talked about yet, but we'll soon to have perhaps shows about them. So here's an ode to two people I haven't actually talked about, and I won't mention their names because I actually haven't asked them if that's okay, but I feel like I'm gonna have to do an episode on them because they're clearly very special people in my life. So a work colleague for Christmas this year got Chris and I a puzzle, and it's a Bob's Burgers thousand piece puzzle and Chris and I love Bob's Burgers. We've gone to the Fillmore to see a table read with the cast of Bob's Burgers, and we are just huge fans. So this arrived unexpectedly, I had no idea it was coming, by UPS or FedEx, I don't remember who. It was wrapped and from this work colleague and his wife, and it was the most wonderful surprising gifts because it was unexpected. It was so thoughtful of something that Chris and I love and it was just a really thoughtful spot on gift. And will keep us busy over the winter because it's a thousand pieces. So very thoughtful, very interesting because if you know anything about Bob's Burgers, there's always a burger special. And this particular one on the side of the box is kind of a hoot. It's burger of the day is toe jam burger, so even funny, but it, even funnier. But this is just a great, just a great gift to open up and unexpected. I mean, it was just overwhelmingly unexpected and made us very, um, maybe that made us kind of weepy too, because it was just loving and ex unexpected, and those are the best kinds of gifts. And then, from another friend that I will be doing a show about, which I haven't yet, I've got another, it seemed to be kind of a puzzle year, because we are sort of still working from home and at home quite a bit, is this fantastic 500 piece puzzle called The Movement. And it's about the women's movement and peace movement of the year. And it is another beautiful, really cool puzzle. And this will keep us busy as well. And it's great, it has all sorts of things. It talks about peace and love, treat everyone fairly, power to the polls, strong women, we are all one, we can do it, women's rights, I'm with her. It's just a great, really tie-in to the whole year of what we've been experiencing and what we still need to fight for. So really cool, cool. another very thoughtful, delivered to my door, socially distanced, left on my doorstep, but another wonderful, thoughtful gift from a good friend. So this is really cool things from, from folks that, as I say, I haven't talked about yet, but I feel like I probably need to because their gifts were so thoughtful and meaningful because they really are part of our world and our circle as well. So you have to meet them at some point in time and you haven't yet, but you will. But then I think I have to talk to you about what I've been reading because it's not like I haven't been reading. Now I have not done a show in a while because I work and so it's, it's a little bit, of, it's a different timing of when we, we do shows. And, but I wanted to tell you about a couple things that I'm reading. One is my upstairs book that I read before I go to bed and one's my downstairs book. And I don't know if you remember, but in the first episode we did was the No Need Bread, and that was from one of a work colleague. The same work colleague who gave me that recipe recommended a book called A Woman of No Importance, 
by Sonia Purnell. And it is the never before told story of Virginia Hall, who was the American spy who changed the course of World War II. And it is amazing and great. I mean, what a great story of something I had not read before. I read a lot of World War II books. I mean, it seems to be just something I read a lot of. And we also do a lot of World War II books in our book group. But he recommended this to me, and it has been just a fascinating, riveting read on a woman we had, had no idea was so involved in the resistance. And she was an American, but worked for uh, the resistance. She had a very strong affinity for France and the French people, and worked uh, with Britain, and was just an amazing, tenacious, so much integrity, and plus that she actually had... Um, a prosthetic. She had 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 an accident with her leg, and um, so part of her leg had been cut off. So she did all of this work during World War II as an American spy, and just very little heard of until now. It is fascinating and an interesting tie-in. He had already recommended this book to me, and I found out that the Spartan Book Club at Michigan State. Uh, they're, they started a book club online, and their first book in January is going to be The Woman of No Importance. So what a crazy cool tie-in to that. So that's what I've been reading. That's my downstairs book, and it's too riveting to read before I go to bed because I can't sleep afterwards. So it's my downstairs book. And then my upstairs book, before I go to bed, is called Beginner's Pluck, Build Your Life of Purpose and Impact Now by Liz Forkin Bohannon. Now, she was actually, I mentioned Catalyst before in other books. It's a leadership um, sort of university, and this year it was a virtual, and it's put on by Southwest Michigan First here in Kalamazoo. And Liz has actually been at Catalyst before, and her story is a really good one, except this time I thought it was even better because it's been a few years, and she's had a chance to grow and become more of who she really needs to be. And she talks a lot about, contrary to almost what Bob Goff talks about in Dream Big, and you know I love Bob Goff of Dream Big and Well Love Does, she talks about dreaming small and thinking about things in smaller steps that are more manageable because sometimes when you dream too big, you're afraid of starting. So her beginner's pluck talks about being unafraid to be a beginner again and be curious because sometimes our growth journey to change and to trying new things is not linear. It's a circle. And sometimes you have to go back around to becoming a beginner again to be open to just whatever life holds for you. And I, I've i experienced that personally. I can relate to that because of what you're experiencing right now. I think I told you in the beginning I'd never done social media before when we started this journey together, but I was really missing friends and family. And sometimes you just need to start. I didn't have a clear goal at that time, but when I first started episode one, but it became more evolved, but you just have to start it. And then things work themselves out because it's being a beginner. You know, I didn't know how to do any of it. I didn't know how to tape stuff and edit it and put it, I get a YouTube channel and all those types of things. And then I started a blog. So I really have lived what Liz is talking about, in that sometimes you just need to start, remember to be a beginner, and to dream small. So a really good motivational, just a really upbeat book to read right before I go to bed. So that's those, kind of what I've been reading. I mean, I'm reading other things as well, but those are really current, and just wanted to let you know what I've been reading. Well, good morning. It's the morning after we set the buns or the sticky rolls to set and rise overnight. They have risen nicely and they are going to go into the oven for our morning breakfast. We're going to remember we're going to bake it for about a half an hour at 350 degrees and then invert on a plate. I'm not going to show you the inversion part because I'm going to need Chris to help me with that. I usually make a mess when I do that. But And remember to note that it will be, as my mom's note said last night, the very runny when taking out of the pan, so be prepared. So we are prepared. We know what to do once we invert, so we will be safe. One of the things I wanted to emphasize from the first part of this episode is it isn't really about the gifts themselves. Um, these are a few of my favorite things. 
it's really going back to the inspiration of Leon and the Kindness Diaries and the Go Be Kind shirt that I wore yesterday. I have been lucky in my life to have friends and family who are those extraordinary, ordinary people who are so thoughtful and kind and caring that they know you so well and they want to extend the memory or an experience that they have had with you as well. And that's really what it's about. It's about connecting all of these dots and experiences and wanting to be part of it with you, be on the journey with you. And that's really the tie-in to the gratitude of the year for 2020, going into 2021. And then I wanted to share that with you and how I live with extraordinary, ordinary people every day. And they're the ones who basically shaped me and who I and of who I am today, basically. So they're funny, they're kind, they're smart. I'm so lucky that way. And I get to share experiences with them all the time, even during I guess I would say during this lockdown time when we, we aren't seeing each other, you can still do socially distanced things. You know, I like to do things that are sophisticated and complex, but also kitschy at the same time. So it's, it's that wonderful, beautiful middle that I think we talked about on the first episode. So for something socially distanced to do for Christmas, we went to St. Joe, Michigan, which is on Lake, it's on Lake Michigan, and they have these lights on the bluff. So along the bluff, you can walk, so you can be outside and walking along, and the, the bluff has different light pieces or ornaments or materials up, so you can walk through them and so forth. But the coolest part, unexpected part, was the Jeep parade. So we had gone back to our car, and we were ready to get in, and this Jeep Wrangler, I think it was, came down the street that we were on and it was all lit up and decorated. And then another Jeep came down and then another Jeep. And I think there were probably about 20 decorated Jeeps <laughs> that went by and I just kept clapping and like, oh, and I kept just exclamation, you know, had a lot of exclamations because it was so cool, unexpected, Nothing fancy, but just a really cool, unexpected, joyful thing that happened when we're out and about with friends. Again, socially distanced, we weren't together, separate cars, but it was just a great experience, an unexpected experience, and what a great thing to have with, with friends. So I wanted to tell you about, I'm wearing a Somebody Feed Phil shirt today. This is my big branding advertisement for, I've mentioned this before, the shows, I mentioned it yesterday, although I realized that the apron I had on that Ed had lovingly given me, maybe I wasn't meant for something white, that pure white, because I had a, a band of cinnamon or something on from the cinnamon rolls, like across my <laughs> stomach when I looked at the apron last night. But anyway, it's a, a shout out to Somebody Feed Phil, again, the food traveling show, and his first show was actually on PBS of, you know, I'll have what Phil's having, and then he went to Netflix, and it's Somebody Feed Phil. And all the merchandise that he has, that he's, that's online, all of the proceeds go to Food Forward, which is a nonprofit that fights hunger and prevents surplus fresh produce or fresh food waste. So you might want to get on, on that and find out about that. But all of the proceeds for all of his swag and merchandise goes for um, Food Forward. So really cool. He's very passionate about um, restaurants and food waste and hunger and so forth. So um, go on his website if you can. So tying it all back in together, thinking about friends and family over the past year and really all the time. This is my gift, a love letter to them and has been. So it ties in really all, everybody ties them all in together and really is a testament to great friends and family, the extraordinary and the ordinary that I get to be part of and live with every day. Well, my mother's sticky buns, courtesy of Eleanor Lake, have come out of the oven, and they are absolutely beautiful, as you can see. They're still very warm, so I'm not thinking this is the best time to <laughs> test them out, because I'll probably burn my tongue. But Chris did the inversion for me, and they turned out, it turned out just absolutely beautifully, as you can see. If I had done it, we would have had sticky buns everywhere. Just, I know this from personal experience. 
But I really wanted to leave you with this last thing that go and celebrate and acknowledge the extraordinary ordinary people in your life. You are probably surrounded by them and you just may not realize it. So celebrate and acknowledge, again, the extraordinary ordinary people in your life. Go be kind. And I know that when I bite in to these sticky buns, it's going to be as if these vignettes and flashes of memory throughout time and all of my life will come into play because that's what baking is really about. It is, is all these connections like we've talked about, and I know that this is going to be the same. Just even talking about it connects me back, you know, 40, 50 years <laughs> to different points in time in my life and memory, good memories of time with my, my parents and friends and family. So go be kind and go and celebrate the extraordinary ordinary people in your life.